Hello, today I wanted to try something else. Um, as you can see, this is the first video where I show my uh, uh, face and uh, I wanted to see how that goes. So it's a bit uh, strange, but I wanted to, uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to talk to you while I show you how I currently draw because I think it's an interesting way of doing it. Um, I'll show you the tools I use and I'll work on an illustration and then what I'll do is I'll um, take an illustration from uh, Gustave Doré that he made for uh, for uh, Don Quixote and I will uh, use that as a reference to make my version of it in my usual uh, thin line method so let's get started so this uh, I'll start with this this is uh, I, I, I cut open a color pencil and took out the lead it's a color pencil which is uh, wax based so it doesn't smear as much and it's green and I uh, it's, it's, it's unshaped and, uh, and sharpened and that's what I use to block in the bigger shapes so uh, the bigger volumes to get that uh, right first before I dive into the details so I'll, in this case for this illustration let's see if I get on the, it on the paper right so basically maybe first go for a gesture so there's the head here it's actually going quite diagonal and there's a, a leg if we can make it a bit bigger I think a leg here and going down and here is a leg always look also at the relative positions of the knees and this foot is going back quite a bit and it has to because otherwise the figure topple so you have to make sure with your illustration that the figure doesn't topple okay this would fit on the page on the screen so let's put the shoulder here so basically I'm gonna first try to imagine the underlying volumes so here it's basically I'm actually kind of drawing a box almost this is spine here and here relatively far because of these really bending backward there's a hip I'll make that a box too so uh, yeah and there is a leg coming out here we're looking on top of it it's going like this basically a bit and like I said there's a leg also here it's bending forward slightly and then going back here the foot going like that and here again this uh, again relative feet positions the feet goes here roughly if this this the, it helps to make sure that the character doesn't topple on the page so to get the positions of the feet right so, I hope this recording goes well. Sorry, I forget to <laughs> look at the camera, but uh, it's, it's the first for me. I'm, so I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm trying. This is going to be interesting to see what this works out like. I have the face here, a head. We have a hat. We have an arm here. Which it rests on. And a hand. Somehow it feels like he is bending backwards slightly more than I drew here. See, that's the cool thing about first doing it rough. And you see, if, if, if something is wrong, then it's already wrong in this stage often. So it's, it's useful to get it right in this stage already. Now, the next, so this is a rough, basically quick rough sketch. And what I do next is I use this, uh, uh, I use a, f a technical pencil with a blue pencil lead from uh, Pentel. I, I've not seen any other company sell this, but um, it's, uh, it's it's quite useful because you can draw really fine. You don't have to, have to sharpen things. Uh, now I'm going to block in. 
uh, lightly because it's still it is pencil so you can sort of do things really lightly and I, I am going to stylize it a bit because I think his sketch is really loose but really full of information on the on how the cloth falls so I'm going to do it really loosely and I think people who have watched my channel have seen that I've also used this illustration for another video I just I just love these Gustave Doré drawings a lot they have a looseness to them and character and it's clearly drawn by great draftsmen uh, he probably drew them really quickly it was for uh, he, he basically was a paid job to make illustrations for Don Quixote's book and um, so uh, yeah he did it for the money probably so it's better it's like nowadays you will draw digitally so you know, to get to get the commission done as quickly as possible let's see there's some it's interesting to see how the cloth falls in this case it really shows how to follow the the, the figure maybe we should also do some videos on how to to do folds. I'm still keeping it light because I want to be able to make fixes. This is basically a, each each stage is one pass at trying to get the drawing right but because I'm drawing it lightly and course to fine you, you have I uh, have a lot of op opportunity to still fix things basically to sort of take a step back and see hey is this right? If, I mean the first line might be wrong maybe even the second line might be wrong. So. It's, that's the one thing I, I never understand how people do it who film themselves uh, talking because I it's very hard for me to keep talking as I uh, as I draw but I thought it would be a good idea because I've, I've seen other videos where the, the maker looks into the camera and uh, it, it just it, it works much better because you can look at someone drawing but um, you have much more of a feel that you are with them if, if, if they also show their face if you can also see them so uh, and, and th since this is still a relatively new YouTube channel I wanted to uh, 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 it's a good idea to sort of uh, test to try things out to experiment because that's the advantage of if, if you're starting out uh, you won't lose many followers if, if you do suddenly do something that people don't like you can still experiment and see how people respond to it if you're bigger then it's much harder to to change things and uh, that's one of the things I had with my Instagram account it became very big and each time I, I wanted to do try something different I, I got really worried will, will I lose followers over this and it's, it is an advantage of being a small channel is, is, is that you can really try things out experiment and uh, do different things like you know try a video where you show your face if it doesn't work <laughs> then the next video I don't show my face anymore <laughs> so you better like it you better subscribe I'm kidding I hope you like the video nonetheless and, uh, and, uh, it's it's very interesting to uh, make YouTube videos you learn a lot and uh, it's, it's also stuff you can take with you as you make art it's, uh, it's about how, how audiences engage with your work and how you, how you can work with that to try things out. So I have other videos coming soon, I think I'm, I'm going to release them soon, about, uh, or maybe I already have. It's about um, the gamification of your, of your, uh, of your habits, you, you, can, you, can, as you can make something uh, um, a habit I think also by just making it plain fun it's, it's very important that you enjoy what you do and um, you can take a cue from computer games there you have levels you complete things and this this might be the same thing I'm, I'm constantly trying new things and uh, it's fun to fill sketchbooks but also fun to sort of try to achieve things to see if you can pull it off 
I think that's an important part of what makes uh, something fun to do, sort of the challenge, see if you can pull something off. Here, I'll make this one. I try to not erase, but it's sort of, it's different from the original, but I don't think it's bad, it's okay. It's okay to deviate from your efforts. It's, it's uh, you, you, as you learn, as you as you practice, you learn. So again, this is a Gustave Doré illustration I'm using for reference. It's in the public domain. I, I scanned the illustration myself from an original book from the 1800s, from 1800s, uh, 19th century. So it's it's it is in the public domain, at least. Uh, the original illustration but you have to still mention I think that you use that you copied it otherwise it becomes plagiarism so you're not infringing on anyone's copyright but but if you imply that you, that you are the original author then that's uh, also not good of course you have to you do have to give credit where credit is due if it's an, or, an original work of art then and and it's made by an artist who's still alive then then it's also copyright infringement because you have to have uh, many people online don't know that I think they think that giving credit is enough but you actually do have to have permission from the original author actually anyway <laughs> so uh, now I have drawn it lightly what I'll do next is make a much tighter version of the blue pencil lines so that I can ink over it later So basically, I'm, I've, 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 the first light lines were exploratory, and now I'm choosing which lines I do want. And it's still even now changing lines because um, it's basically each time I go over it, it's a new iteration of the underlying drawing, a new refinement, uh, a new refinement basically. Yeah. So it's a new prototype. There's another video that's coming out about how. You can create, keep creating new versions of a work of art to keep on improving on it. It's, um, that's another version. So, well, let me know if, if you think this, this kind of video is useful. Uh, would you like me to sh demonstrate drawing exercises in a video like this so you can do them with me? So I'm explaining them in the beginning and then maybe later um, you can draw along with me or something. So it comes a half hour video where I first demonstrate an exercise and then we do it together while you listen to me. The, the problem with that is, and I'm always overthinking things, but if you want to do the exercise several times, you probably don't want to hear me say the exact same things again and again, so, but maybe I can do the same exercise also over and over and record a new video for it. So each time you have me say new things otherwise you would keep hearing me say the same things over and over and it would probably become a bit boring so I'm almost ready and I'm going to try to also ink it uh, yeah I think because my cameras uh, can kind of record for around a half hour. So I have to take up, oh, I see a mistake here. That's something I have to take into account. Otherwise, uh, I might be drawing and, it, and, and the camera's just shut off and I, I miss a certain part of the drawing. It might be not, not be rec uh, recorded. So a lot is new in what I'm doing. I'm 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 now just now realizing that I just switched on my um, my studio light, but that's ma making a buzzing sound. I, I hope that doesn't bother too much. I will, I'll hear it in the edit. I always have the option of not uploading this video, of course. I mean, it's just an experiment, but maybe it's not good enough to show to you. That's. Uh, There's this tension about should you be in your comfort zone? 
the thing with the comfort zone is it, it's, it's really comfortable it's really uh, fun and nice to be in the comfort zone but um, it eventually gets boring but then you try new things and you're not as good at those yet and that's kind of stressful but then you get the hang of it and then it becomes boring again so let's see let's I think that's better. It's not exactly the same as, as the reference, but it's just for practice. Coming up with my own version of it. I learned again from it. I'm, I'm, I'm learning, one of the things I'm learning is whether this works as a YouTube video. Whether um, this can work. So, now what I do is, for this video, I think I have enough time for it. I'll ink it with uh, basically a, a, a fine pen. I, I like fine pens because uh, they give me a range to, to, to create sort of different uh, uh, line thickness. It's, it's, it is a bad habit because I, uh, I think it's better if I sort of eventually go with, with a dip pen and just do the, the correct line thickness in one go because those, be those confident line strokes do look beautiful. So in, in the end, that's better, but for sketching, especially for on the go, I mean, the, the tools I've been showing you are this, basically. And that's, you can just have with you, you know, you can have it uh, on you uh, wherever you go. You can, uh, you can be on site and work with the green and the blue uh, color pencils. And then maybe when you're back home, you can ink it with a pen. It's very portable. I use green and blue on purpose as different colors because then I can keep the two things apart. I mean, I, I can see the green and the, I know that the green is the sort of understructure and uh, the blue I do uh, fine with. Comics creators also, you do the, just do sometimes do this with pencil. They do a, a breakdown in regular pencil. I need to hurry up before the camera finishes. They'll do a breakdown in pencils, uh, uh, sort of which a quick rough uh, pencil drawing. This is what I did in green. And then they'll do a more precise uh, tight pencils, which are sometimes called a layout. And then uh, they do the inking with a pen or a brush with ink. And um, but it's the same sets of stages, basically. You, you you keep refining it. The, uh, the reason for using color pencil, a regular pencil is sort of kind of, it's, it's kind of like clay. So it's, it sort of crumbles and these little particles get into the paper and that's basically uh, how you make the marks. Uh, that, that's why coarse paper is, is pleasant for, for a regular pencil. And um, with color pencil doesn't smear. That's, that's an advantage because it's wax based so that makes it nicer for in a sketchbook you know so it doesn't smear as much it has a, a advantage or disadvantage that you can't use an eraser which i think is a good thing because you know uh, if you can't erase it, it forces you to sort of concentrate and be more precise even with color pencils you, you can first draw lightly but you do have to consider that you, you just ma did make a mark so it's, you're just that much more uh, careful with it of course with inking you have to be even more careful it's just useful practice to sort of try to be accurate in what you're trying to say trying to be accurate in uh, the mark you're making and so yeah, as you can see I, I, I go over uh, the same lines repeatedly I, I, I kind of saw Gabriel Rodriguez do this and in, uh, in the videos he uploads uh, where you can see him ink in real life and I thought, wow, yeah, that's that's beautiful because he comes out with beautiful lines. He's a very good draftsman. But um, yeah, eventually it's, uh, it's it's probably also good practice to sort of try getting the lines right in one go with a brush stroke or with a pen, with a uh, dip pen, for example. You get these beautiful variations in line with. Many artists like to use a uh, uh, brush. But I kind of prefer dip pens because I just prefer the line quality that comes from them. Sorry, I was just checking how much time I have. I think I have around 10 minutes left. I might restart the camera 
so that I have more time. So I have two cameras. I have, I have one pointing downward. It's it's hanging from the ceiling and it's sort of uh, hanging downward so I can film uh, myself drawing. I have a camera to the side of me where uh, you can see me. Um, I have a studio light for good lighting. So, and actually I have sunlight from the window up front. Well, there is not not much sun at the moment. It's uh, it's it's uh, it might start thundering in a minute, so then I'll have to stop. Nature, eh? Gets in the way. I have to say this is also an experiment for me, uh, where I talk while I draw. I'm, I'm usually I, I'm really not good at that. Because it's sort of a different part of your brain that you use when drawing, and that part of the brain can't express itself in words, but it gets excited when the line is right, etc. And it just works better if you just don't think in words. But maybe I've get, gotten better over time, so now I can maybe do it. it doesn't seem to go too bad. It's it's not exactly the same as the original reference, but maybe that's also not necessary. It's, uh, it's going okay. It's 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 weird to sort of the trick to this kind of thing is just just kind of say what uh, enters your mind, and it's very different from uh, uh, the other videos I do where I script everything. It's uh, scripting is useful because it's uh, you, you can plan what you say, and I tend to say uh a lot, and I'm noticing I'm not doing that that much at the moment. Uh, that may be because when I script things. And I read from a script. Maybe I'm I'm talking too fast. And um, right now I'm just you know drawing and talking as I draw. It's going to be a quick sketch, I suppose. Should I do a series on how to draw the cloth figure? Because it's I, I noticed that. Um, uh, YouTube did remove one uh, a thumbnail from one of my videos, and it was uh, the gesture drawing video. But I mean, gesture gesture is not nudity, right? I think it was uh, basically the algorithm thinking that I, because I used the word gesture that they just I I assumed that uh, the scribbles I saw in the thumbnail were uh, nudity, which they were not, of course. I mean, I tried to sort of really try to make sure I keep uh, to the guidelines of YouTube. Uh, there's, there's no point in not keeping to the guidelines. I mean, you risk uh, them uh, shutting down your channel, so it's gonna... and. Uh, and, and your video has to be, or at least the thumbnails, have to be okay for everybody, for children, etc. And so, so they have to be family friendly. So and uh, there's no point, there's no ne there's no need for it, basically. And, and uh, maybe my channel is too small still to do gesture drawing. But I was thinking maybe figure drawing, you know? Maybe we can do figure drawing uh, sessions where, where we practice drawing the clothes figure together maybe from reference i can find reference like this this is public domain this is public domain image uh, the interesting thing is usually you use photos for reference but what i noticed is that you can even just use another illustration or even a, a, a rough sketch even from another artist you can use that because there's a lot of information in it the artist recorded a lot of information in that sketch and you can use that information and you can add to it from your own memory or other reference you can actually it's, it's quite fun because that means you can learn from the past masters and use their drawings like i'm doing right now i'm, I'm copying uh, a drawing from gustave Doré and uh, learning from it 
and it might even be a good idea to try it with different artists. Would, would that be an interesting thing to do? Uh, to do more of these videos where we draw together and discuss all the folds. Because the thing is, it's a good idea to practice folds, but frankly, it's a bit boring, isn't it? You have the, the diaper fold and the pipe fold, and etc. And it's just boring. You want to draw things. But if you practice it within the context of drawing some clothes on a real character, that might be fun, right? So maybe... Because that's one of the things that are important, I think. You have to make sure that... You, you do have to practice, but you also have to make sure it's fun. Otherwise you can't keep on doing it. That's why also the gamification. Try uh, Keep trying to do new things. Keep trying to create new challenges for yourself. Like, like like with a computer game, you know, it's each level is a new one. If a computer game didn't have levels, you would probably not enjoy playing it as much. Eventually, you know, the gameplay can be fun, but you ev eventually, yeah, what's the point of it? It's really that you need to complete the levels, is what uh, also keeps you playing, because it gives you a goal, an arbitrary goal to complete. And it's, I think it's an important part of, uh, of making a computer game fun. And it can maybe be an important part of making drawing fun. Don't just practice, but actually have a goal in mind, something you want to achieve. And uh, not just practice, not just uh, drawing circles, not draw, just drawing boxes, not, not just practicing folds, but actually having a purpose in mind. You now wanting to draw a specific person, uh, maybe you can use that to practice drawing boxes, or maybe you can use that to practice uh, drawing uh, fold, uh, clothes. One thing that's a disadvantage of drawing on the camera is that I usually I, I'm over my paper way more. I hang over my paper, and now it's because it has to be under the under the camera. I'm I'm I'm, I'm having my arm slightly away from from my body, and that makes it harder for me to to make the accurate line uh, marks. So, I don't think this one came out too shabby. It's not too bad, right? What I could also do is uh, if other people do the same exercises, I can do videos where I critique uh, drawings that you send in if you use the same reference. You can send it in and uh, I can give you pointers on how to improve your drawing. That could be useful. And then, uh, what do you think? Would that be a cool thing to do? Almost done. How much time do I have? Ooh. Almost ready. Okay, well, thank you for watching. I think I have a minute left. Thank you for watching. Hope to uh, uh, see you again next time. And uh, I hope that this video works. And uh, I hope you enjoyed drawing with me, watching. And um, till next time, bye bye.